Hey guys, I got uh, some stuff to say about the wraps. So, if you haven't been watching, um, uh, the three big guys thing in Toronto is bullshit. It's not going to happen. So, this is all based on Raptors basketball and being realistic and knowing this franchise. People that don't follow this franchise do not know this franchise. They don't give it credit. There's zero respect. I haven't missed a, an, a minute of Raptors basketball in I don't know how many years. I'm like the couch potato nav, okay? So trust me, I get what Raptors basketball is. So this is based on that. So for this vid, we get to have a little bit of fun. Instead of trading the pick away, as I suggest I might do if the market looks good, and that would reap potentially some very big fish. Although again, losing Jaron Harris as a, a trade chip is big. Um, and it has to do with expiring contracts, guys. I'm talking about how everyone thinks the next step is the draft, but I promise you Bobby and Masai right now are deciding if they can get a return from the contracts of Rodney Hood, Aaron Baines, and potentially even Chris Boucher. Although probably not, he's really good value. Speed. So now let's have some fun with drafting. And I want you to understand that it's based on, we're not rebuilding, okay? So here we go. So the first overall pick, Detroit. I don't agree with trading up, by the way. I should say that quickly. Uh, I'm not trading up. Like, the cost is assets, and I'm going for it. Like, I'm a contender this year. I feel like all these other teams are making a mistake putting all of their eggs in three baskets. Kyrie, KD, and James Harden. Two out of three of those guys can score you 47 points multiple games in a row in the playoffs, but never use their team, just like Scottie Pippen said. I'm sorry to say it, but I agree with Scottie Pippen. KD didn't use his team. He's got an amazing bench over there. Like Blake Griffin was amazing. Harris barely touched the ball. And KD tried to win by himself. Sorry, KD, it's true. And Kyrie, I wouldn't put you on my team in a heartbeat. He's toxic. Like, this is the myth. You win championships in 2019 by having a team next man up team atmosphere. That's how we won. That's championship basketball. You're down 0-2, you come back, you win games because your locker room is tight. So now that you understand that this isn't some bullshit who's the best player video about who's the fourth best player in the NBA draft, this is about who's the best player available as far as the Raptors are concerned, assuming we keep the fourth pick. Okay, so pick number one goes to Detroit. They're not going to pass on Cade. And if someone trades up, they're not going to pass on Cade. This just, he is, a, for real, this draft is crazy because you have Cade, which he's such a good prospect, right? And then you have Evan Mobley. He's definitely tier two. And then you have a whole bunch of, they call them franchise altering talents. But I would argue that you have a whole bunch of very high potential talented guys and then you, there are probably NBA All-Stars eventually. And then you have a group of NBA All-Stars. And then you have a whole bunch of role players. So this draft is like significantly deep. So to think that by drafting out of those top five, which includes Suggs, Green, Cunningham, Mobley, and Kaminga, according to most analysts, by drafting out of that, there's this misnomer that you screwed up. And that's not the case because the Raptors are looking, if they keep this pick, to take someone with the pick that's a future fucking all-star that suits their team, goes into the future where we have a, a window based on our contracts to keep winning, to keep going back to the playoffs, to be the new San Antonio Spurs who are just super well built, okay? So this is based on that. So Cade's going number one. You can see what they've got in Detroit there and what they can do. Obviously, they could easily move somebody like Jeremy Grant. Uh, so let's let's get to the next thing. And the next one is definitely Evan Mobley. Anybody that thinks Mobley is going to slip past the Rockets and Cleveland is crazy. Uh, people say he'll slip past the Rockets because of Christian Wood. Christian Wood's another player that the Raptors should be targeting right now in the, uh, in the offseason already. And they only have until the fourth day before the draft to, to make a play like I described in, in episode two uh, to use expiring contracts. Anyway... I love to get this guy. If Evan Mobley slips slips to four, there's nothing wrong with taking Evan Mobley. He's a generational. Well, look at the guys I just listed. Like 
he is legitimately, and I've watched tons of Evan Mobley, he is Chris Bosh and DeAndre Ayton. And when Ayton was picked ahead of Luca and Trey, people criticized that, right? Like, and have for years. Ayton is a stud. Anyone watching the playoffs knows that. They don't mind having Christian Wood and Evan Mobley. Christian Wood at the trade deadline next year is something they'd happily trade as an asset. His contract's amazing, like super favorable. He's easy to move. He's he's potentially an all-star. He looks amazing. Raptors should be targeting a guy like Christian Wood. Everyone's talking about Rashawn Holmes. We don't have the money to sign Rashawn Holmes. We should be signing Kalo. <laughs> Like, that's what I find so funny is everyone's talking about what center, what high price center do we do. I'm going to show you in this video that we're not after a high price center. Masai Bobby call me. <laughs> so as I said, Mobley goes two to Houston is my guess. Uh, and it's because he's so insanely good and they could totally use him given their young talent. But they'll be looking to move John Wall. I feel like I left out a contract here and I think they'll be looking to move Christian Wood. They had really great performances from Porter Jr. and, and Jay Sean uh, Tate, and they have picks. And I put a scenario to you where we might even trade the Rockets our fourth overall pick. Anyway, that's a different video. You can check that out. So let's get to the one that's interesting. So this is where it becomes super interesting because I think Mobley's gone for sure. And I, if I'm Cleveland, I'm actually looking at Kaminga because I have seen, I watch Cleveland basketball. I like rebuilding teams. I actually really like Sexton, and I really like Okoro, and Darius Garland is incredible. So I actually feel like their guards, I'm not trading any of those guards because I have a sixth man. If I play those guards in a rotation, I have a sixth man out of those guards, and that's totally realistic there uh, if they can get them to play defense. So I also am re-signing Jared Allen. Anyone th thinks that Cleveland will be upset to draft Evan Mobley and have Jared Allen is crazy because Jared Allen's so young. He's an amazing center. They have his bird rights. You don't just piss that away, right? Like they can't trade him right now. So he's getting re-signed and they're going to match the offer because if they do want to move him, it'll be at a trade deadline. The whole Stephen A notion that Kyle Lowry's value is highest at a sign and trade for the Raptors is absurd. Kyle Lowry can come back, mentor our young guards, and the whole team because he's a freaking champion. And then if if we're not looking good, we can trade him at a trade deadline in the future. The trade deadline is the time to trade. The reason he wasn't traded at the trade deadline last year is because they weren't willing to pay for Kyle. And Messiah and Bobby looked at their team and said, oh, we still have next year. All of, If you go and look at their payroll, I should have linked it. The Raptors payroll is super favorable. Like we're set up for another two seasons. So we're going for it. Make no mistake. The Raptors will be going for the playoffs this year to win another championship, hopefully. Anyway, uh, so Kaminga is who I would pick here. Uh, the reason is he's, uh, you know, small. He's a forward. Uh, he's insane. I think his talent is incredible. And unlike some of the guys that are listed with him, he's often mentioned as the four, uh, fifth guy. I think he... So I didn't just watch tape. I watched interviews and tape. And I felt that in his interviews, he, he clearly has high, high IQ. He's super coachable. He's a humble, team-first kid. He's super young. His potential is through the roof. And he's explosive. Like, he does things that you cannot, you need, I would be scared to do them. Like, it's like a guy that would sit at the front of a roller coaster, like, on the front and, like, totally just go. He's really impressive. He's got a good handle already. He's already shooting from outside. He's doing everything. And uh, his size is great. Um, yeah, he's developing quickly. And this is a guy with like, he came from overseas, right? I believe he's Congo. So this is a guy that didn't play as necessarily from the time he was three years old, right? Anyway, let's move on. The question is, do the Raptors really want a guard? And my answer to you is not really. Um, but let's talk about these three guards first. So again, I didn't just watch tape, I watched interviews. From the tape, Jalen Green is insane. It's like watching a potential Kevin Durant, okay? He looks that good at times. The reason the Raptors won't be drafting him at four, in my opinion, is A, they don't play that type of basketball where you have one guy just sandaling the rock. Uh, and at times it's painful to watch the Raptors on offense for this reason. Minute. 
The reason we won't go for Jalen Green is when I watch his interviews, I question his IQ a little bit. I don't question his heart, his athleticism, his shooting. It's all amazing. But what I, what he's not for me is a guaranteed contribute this year guy. Uh, he had, um, like, the one thing that I noted from his stuff is he plays so fast. Like, he often runs into fouls. He's the type of guy Kalo would just murder in terms of taking charges and stuff. Uh, like, the ball would be going the other way all the time. So as much as he's done really well against, like, the guys on his team that he's practicing with are, like, Amir Johnson, Jared Jack. Like, these are professional basketball players. It's really great to see how talented Jalen Green is. And that's why scouts are so excited for him. But he's the type of player that's the best available pick for someone like the Magic, a rebuilding team. If you're going for it right now, it's why it's why the Pascal Siakam for Wiseman rumor exists. Golden State's going for it. So Wiseman, they're confident he'll be good. That's why they drafted him. But he's he's taking up a roster spot right now. They want to move him because he's an asset and they want to win. The Raptors are in the same situation. You pass on Jalen Green. The other thing I said is he's mental. He has mental streakiness. And I sensed in him that he's the type, he's, he's me as a golfer. I'm great if I'm hitting the ball well. But if I have two holes where I just make bad contact, I'm in my head. Baseball, same thing. It's the type of thing where solid athletes, ready to play now athletes, well, ready to champion, threaten for a championship athletes, don't have those kind of mental breaks. They miss a free throw and they hit hit again. They miss a shot and guess what? Next time they're open, they take the same shot. That's where we need them. Jalen Green's not there, in my opinion. Let's get to Suggs. Suggs, 6'4". This guy I would build a team around. So if I was Suggs. The Raptors will not go for Jalen Suggs. The reason is, if you were keeping Kyle, he would be... He, you're keeping Kyle. You don't need Jalen Suggs. You have Freddie and Kyle. Suggs' size is great. Here's what I don't like about Suggs. In interviews, as much as he's known as a team leader on the court, in interviews off the court, and I dug deep. I looked for like stuff he's done with friends online and stuff like that. I question his prissiness. So I would question whether Jalen Suggs can play behind three other guards in terms of the depth chart. I question whether Jalen Suggs can accept his role like Malachi Flynn or Stan, Stanley Johnson, okay? I question that. Um, I question it. Like, remember Serge Ibaka sitting behind Jonas and then sitting behind Marcus Gasol? Like, that's, to me, without Serge Ibaka, we don't win a chip because he accepted his role, right? And when he came out, he came out to play. So I question whether Jalen Suggs is ready to step into a team that's going for it and not be the primary guard. The other thing I question is something the Raptors are dead set against, and he's got good heart, good defense. His scoring at times can be questionable. In fact, like I questioned some of his decision making. His three doesn't look good to me. I'm not an NBA scout, but it doesn't look good to me. Uh, and his turnovers. Go and look for it, guys. Like seriously, as much as he looked good in games and stuff, it is off the charts, his turnovers. And this to me suggests... Like Jack's always saying, take care of the rock. Like, here's your point guard handling the ball every time, and he's not taking care of the rock. Like, it's epidemic with him to the point where, at this point in his career, given the schools he's been at and the programs he's been involved in, he should not be having this trouble as a primary ball handler. So for me, yeah, that little bit of prima donna, potential prima donna, I should say, because he's known as a good team guy. Um, but that little bit of prima donna combined with those turnovers for me there's other guys i'd rather go if i'm going with a guard so the guard that i would go for if i was going to go for any would be keon johnson and this is maybe why the raptors are looking at it and when i'm looking at it i'm looking at the standpoint of who can come in and go now and johnson is first of all he just broke like the nba draft combine record for vertical like smashed it uh he's a tenacious defender He's insanely athletic, like explosive. It's disgusting. He's a hustle guy, and his size for a guard is really good. He would be like if DeMar entered the league as already a really well-known and established defender. Okay, so that's a pretty sweet guard to be bringing in. Um, so, but the problem is, 
And here's where it gets tricky. And I'm not going to go through Mitch, Davion Mitchell, Book Knight, Moody's amazing, and Jared Butler, but they'd be my next kind of four guards on the board. Here's my point. I wouldn't be going for guards because let's look at the Raptors as they're sitting. So we lose Jalen Harris. I already for, told you I didn't take him off there. But the way I see it, we're coming in with two all-star caliber guards, Kyle and Freddie, and probably Gary Trent Jr. We lose... Uh, and then also Malachi, Malachi Flynn. So for me, I'm not looking for anything. And for those of you out there that have heard talking about like moving Malachi, Malachi is the exact type of player that will keep signing contracts in, in Toronto provided we're winning games and come back and play team first basketball. So I'm not moving Malachi. What I was actually hoping for, and this is why Jalen Harris is such a disappointment that he got this ban was to be able to move him with some of my contracts in the off season here as a as a as a prospect that we showed could be a, a really good scorer and a, a hustle defender. Uh, so I think we're gonna see Kyle, Freddie, Gary Trent Jr. and my guess is Malachi and probably Stanimal. You might still see Bembry back, um, and then. We've got guys like Utah we know is coming back for sure. Freddie Gillespie's contract for this year was not guaranteed, but I'd be shocked if he wasn't in the prospect like in the system. And then Paul Watson, I mean, they like his talent, but it'll depend on where they are cap space. And then um uh Kem, we'll talk about it in a minute. Digress. I don't think we're gonna see any of these guards get taken because we don't need freaking guards. What we need is forwards. We desperately need a center, but what I'm going to show you is based on the guy I'd pick, and we should be able to get him at four, no problem. I don't think we'll be able to trade back in the draft. I think his stock has gone up so much uh, by people. So all season long, GMs aren't necessarily paying attention to this stuff. But now that they're out of the playoffs, now they're getting all of the scouting reports and they're watching film like I have been and like all of you have been and trying to figure out who they'd take. And I'm telling you, this is the guy they would, maybe take and I'm telling you flat out if I had the number one overall pick and I knew someone was going to take Cade I would probably trade back if I were the Raptors and still take this guy but I would be scared he might be gone at two even so thank God for Mobley I think those teams Cleveland or Houston will take Mobley I'm hoping one of them will take one of these guards or Kaminga uh, next because this next guy I feel is the steal of the draft So meet the next Raptors draft pick, Scotty Barnes. And I've made a whole video already. It's already posted. Sorry if you're one of the people that watched that first and said, hey, where's number three? I apologize. I wanted to redo this one. Um, yeah, so there's his stuff. He's got he's got everything we look for. In Watch my video. It's a really good scouting thing that kind of puts together a montage of like, his clips, but also interviews. And that's where I feel like you separate the guys that are great talents and potential prospects. And you establish, okay, is this guy right for our team? Is this guy going to embrace what we've got here? And I'm telling you guys, go watch my video. Go watch other videos on him. There's amazing ones that are out there. Go watch some of his game clips. Because his teammates that got famous include Moses Moody, Cade Cunningham. This guy was the point forward that made them look amazing, okay? And I mean, they made each other look amazing. They were all at Montverde uh, High School, and then he was at Florida State. Anyway, go back and watch. The growth he made in this past year, he's defense first. He's all Raptor. He's all Raptor. So now, listen, so they take him. Their triangle two now has such crazy length with OG, Siakam, Boucher, uh, and uh, and Barnes. I'm telling you, it's so di disruptive, the triangle and two. With the combination of guards we have and uh, these, these kind of players rotating in and out, we don't need to spend money on an expensive center because our last two draft picks, if we take Scotty Barnes, and you'll learn this if you watch my video, are big time transition out of their defense, move transition. Does this sound like Raptors basketball? I think it does. Get down the court and be elite, share the ball, everybody eats, 
move the rock, take what the defense gives you. You recognizing any of this stuff from, from post game? Okay. This is literally Raptors basketball. Everybody eats. He doesn't care if he scores. This guy fights for basketballs. He's diving on floors. He's just the first clip I show you in my video, like just shows what this guy is. And I'm notes. Okay. So if we take Barnes, we got Malachi and Barnes. Here's what they have in common. Both pick and roll guys, transition guys, and specialists on defense. We like to play elite D and, and we and got their guys that will accept their role. They're high IQ. They don't mind moving the rock. In fact, they're both good passers and the pick and roll is crazy. Like I said, elite D and this guy's frame out of sight. So the Raptors can afford all they need is to actually develop their pick and roll better. And how good did the Raptors look when they just had Ken Birch last year? Here's a guy that's blue collar. He knows his position. He's going to play, you know, tough D. So what we need to do is find a couple big wide body guys that can run the floor. That's why they tried out Freddie Gillespie. He's exactly the type of guy we want, like big muscular guys that could come in and eat like three, four fouls and we don't mind. Like they just took three fouls against uh, Jokic. Now they got to go on the bench. We want two or three guys like that at low contracts that need a break and we want to be the ones developing them. So this is all, again, based on if we use the fourth overall pick for ourselves. All right, guys, I want to take up any more of your time, but I will say this, um, you know, if you enjoyed the video or you're enjoying my videos, definitely you want to hit the bell so that you know when they come up. I'm hoping to pump out a few more this week before I uh, take a break. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. I know they're verbose, guys, but honestly, I think you got to admit, like, this is straight talk, whether you disagree with it or not. And if you disagree with it, tell me why. What am I missing? Who have you seen in the draft that I should be looking at? Another one I want to know about, who are your second round steals? Because we got playing time for Jalen Harris and Malachi by moving... Um, uh, Matt Thomas and uh, Terrence Davis Jr. last year at the deadline. Uh, and we got, we got to see what they're all about. Who are our, our second round draft pick steals that we get with those picks from that came through the Kings and the Jazz? Also, who do you have in the finals? Cheers. Be well to each other. This is Chef's Kiss Approved. Mwah! <laughs>